Scott, in, in asking the perennial question of what is truth, uh, I, I like to look at it in specific categories. Uh, as a quantum information theorist, uh, what can you say about the nature of truth? Well, you know, um, uh, most of what I do is actually mathematics in some sense, right? I prove theorems. And, you know, math is something that's always occupied an uneasy place in our culture, even in, in the culture of science, I think. Because um, on the one hand, you know, it's said to be absolutely certain, uh, you know, maybe the only thing that's absolutely certain apart from, you know, our own existence or something. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it doesn't seem to be derived from anything in the physical world. Right, to where does it come from? Mm. And so, you know, there have been a lot of attempts over the years to try to drag mathematical knowledge back down to, you know, the physical world in one way or another, right? Some people say, well, you know, mathematical truth really is just generalized physical observations, right? When we say that two plus two equals four, we're just generalizing from the experience of lots of cavemen who put, mm. you know, two stones mm. next to another two stones and they saw that it was four mm. stones. Hey, but I don't think that really works because suppose you put two stones next to two stones and you found that there were five stones, mm -hmm. right? Then, you know, how would you respond? You might think, okay, maybe these are trick rocks. Mm -hmm. Maybe they split in half. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone added a rock. Maybe I'm hallucinating. But you wouldn't suspect that two plus two equals four had failed you, right? right? Uh, you know, your belief in that just seems to come from somewhere else. Um, you know, sometimes people say that math is... Um, is just a, a cultural construction, right? That, uh, you know, different, different cultures might have different, th completely different theorems that, you know, disagree with our theorems or, you know, that, uh, uh, well, but, uh, you know, I, I've seen a, a, a reproduction of a manuscript from, a Japanese manuscript from about 900 AD, which has a proof that uh, uh, A equals pi R squared, right, for the area of a circle. And, you know, I, I don't read, modern Japanese, let alone ancient Japanese, okay? But uh, just from the pictures, I could completely understand the proof. It's the same proof that I would give, yeah. okay? So math does seem to have a universality that transcends cultures. And, you know, and it seems hard to seriously maintain that if we ever encounter, you know, aliens from another galaxy or something, that they're, gonna, that they're really going to disagree with us about 13 being prime, yeah. right? Okay, you know, they might mean something different by prime number than we mean, but, you know, we can talk to each other. We can get clear on what we mean. And once we, you know, get the words clear, right, it seems we have to agree about the truths. Um, you know, some people say, okay, fine, math, mathematical truths, you know, are just tautologies, right? They're just conventions of language, like saying that all unmarried men are bachelors. Okay, the problem is that we also know mathematical truths, like Fermat's last theorem, uh, that are completely non-obvious, that in many cases that were conjectured hundreds of years before anyone was mm -hmm. able to prove them. So these very, very clearly have the character of a discovery, you know, not of a, not of a language convention. So, you know, my view would be that, you know, we should simply accept the autonomy of mathematical truth. It's a, uh, it's a different form of knowledge uh, than, you know, any other form, but it's accessible to us by reason. Some of the, the, the critics of the, the absoluteness of mathematical truth think, you know, well, they have the ultimate ace in their hall, which is Gödel's incompleteness theorem, okay, which says that, uh, you know, for any, you take any of the standard formal systems that uh, were invented in the early 20th century for reasoning about mathematics, they go by names like piano arithmetic, zermelo frankel set theory, okay, hey, take any of these systems, then, you know, for each one, you can formulate a true statement, in fact, a true statement of arithmetic, uh, but which cannot be proved in this system, assuming that the system is, uh, as we say, sound, that it can only prove true statements. So, and, you know, assuming it only proves true statements, it cannot prove all the true statements. And in particular, it cannot prove its own consistency. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what Gödel's theorem says. Now, you can always just add on the consistency of your set of axioms as an additional axiom, right? <laughs> Presumably, if you were using these axioms in the first place, then you believed that they were consistent. So just assume that. Okay, then the problem is then you get a new system, which again cannot prove its own consistency. <laughs> so then that would have to be added on as a yet further axiom, and so on forever. Okay, so what Gödel tells us is that there is no one axiom system that we can use and that will capture the entirety 
of the truths of arithmetic. There, there's no one formal system that exhausts you know, what, what is true. And so some people say, well, well, doesn't this mean that mathematical truth is relative or something? Mm. And you know, so it's very interesting that Gödel himself had exactly the, op the opposite perspective. Uh, Gödel was an ardent uh, Platonist, someone who believed in an absolute realm of mathematical truths. And he thought that his theorem was strengthening that conviction mm. by showing that you know, this absolute realm cannot be reduced to any one you know, formal uh, game that we uh, play uh, with, with uh. symbols. Now, um, more concretely, right, one can say the, uh, the statements, you know, uh, uh, that, that Gödel uh, looked at, right, are statements that indeed in any one formal system we cannot prove uh, or, or disprove. In another formal system we could prove them, okay? But, uh, but these are statements that we sort of uh, know are true in some mm -hmm. sense, right, because, you know, they... Uh, 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 if we're if we were using these axioms in the first place, then we we believe their consistency. Okay, so so you know in any case, uh, the the statements you know uh, uh, I I would say that statements of arithmetic have a truth or a falsehood that stands independently of our ability to prove or disprove them. Suppose, for example, that tomorrow it was proved that the axioms of set theory were inconsistent. Would that mean that? then two plus two would equal five, that we should build our bridges mm -hmm. according to, you know, two plus two equals five? Of course not. All it would mean would be that those axioms of set theory were bad axioms, mm -hmm. and we should replace mm -hmm. them by better ones. Mm -hmm. Right, so we don't need, you know, these axioms of set theory to ground our belief that two plus two equals four, right? That, you know, the integers have an independent <laughs> reality, I would say, uh, independent of, of, of whatever we can prove or disprove. Now, there are other mathematical questions, much more abstruse ones, ones about different uh, higher degrees of infinity. So there's something called the continuum hypothesis that says that there's no infinity that's bigger than the infinity of integers, but smaller than the infinity of real numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that was proved to be independent of the axioms of set theory in the 1960s. And that, you know, I could easily believe that there's simply no objective truth about the matter, right? It's basically saying, if you want such an infinity, you can have it. There's no, no contradiction will arise. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it either, right? But, you know, we, we didn't even know so clearly what we meant in the first place in talking about such infinities. We sort of don't have any way to get a handle on them other than the axioms themselves, right? So I can easily believe that for such a statement, there is no objective truth about it. But for truths of arithmetic, there I, I cannot believe that. Um, because if we don't know objectively what we mean in saying that, you know, two plus two equals four, or this computer program will eventually stop running, or, you know, this integer is prime, something, then why do we even know what we mean in saying that this statement is or isn't provable? You know, in that case, we just get into an infinite regress. So I would say that, you know, if you doubt that the truths of, of arithmetic have, you know, an absolute uh, uh, validity, then there's nothing that you shouldn't doubt. <laughs>